Hi! Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel in Garland. I'm Deacon Andy Pena. You're just in time. I'm getting ready to set up for Mass, and I thought maybe you'd like to join us. Um, as you can see, we're not inside of church. We're in the sacristy, and behind the scenes, this is where a lot of things happen, where we set up for Mass, where we get our supplies, um, where everything happens right before Mass starts. So, Join me. Stick, stick around. Help me set up for Mass. And as we go through, I hope you'll learn a few things as well as I. All right. I've cleaned up. I'm ready to go. Got a few minutes left for Mass. I'm going to get changed. All right. So I've got some cool clothes in here. The priest has similar clothes. All right. But one of the... Uh, one of the cool things is, is the, the I have colored vestments, okay? And I told you at the very beginning of this uh, video that one of the very first thing I have to do is find out what part of um, uh, the calendar I'm in from the church, okay? Because that will depend on what color I get to wear. I don't decide to pick what color I want. If I did, man, I would probably wear this really cool pink vestment all the time. I like it. I like the pink. I like the purple with it, okay? I'd wear this all the time, but I can't do that. I have to follow the rules of the church, okay? If we're in ordinary time, which we are in right now, I'm going to wear green. So this will be the vestment that I have to use, okay? If I am in Advent or in Lent, I'm going to wear purple, because purple is a color designated for repentance or uh, waiting, okay? So I get to wear this cool purple one, all right? I could also wear red. When do you think I would wear red? This happens to be my favorite one right here, the favorite red one. When do you think I would wear red? Well, think about your everyday things that you see in red. You see a fire engine pass by, that's red, all right? A fire is red, so is blood, right? Blood is red. This is when we would wear a red vestment, when we're celebrating any feasts of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Sp fire or red are represented with the Holy Spirit, okay? Or if we're celebrating a feast day of a saint, particularly a martyr, who shed his blood for Jesus Christ, we would wear red, okay? We would wear pink, I'm sorry, Father likes to call it rose-colored, okay? We would wear this rose-colored, this really cool rose-colored vestment a week before um, the last week of Advent or a week before the last week of Lent. We would only wear this one, we wear this two times a year. I wish we would wear it more, but we only get a chance to wear it twice a year. And that's because we're, we're excited, we're waiting, we're waiting for Christ to be born, or we're waiting for Jesus to rise from the dead, okay? So we're celebrating, we're in a joyful mood, okay? We would wear white for any feasts of saints that we're celebrating, okay? This is more like a beige white, but we're going to wear white on feasts of um, the Blessed Mother, okay? Feasts of different saints, other saints who have not shed their blood, okay? Or other holy days. I or Father would wear a white vestment for baptism because, back, because it means purity, okay? It means purity, cleanliness, okay? Um, light. That's when we would wear white. Did you know that we also wear white at a funeral. Why do you think we wear white most of the time? We could wear black if we wanted to, but why do you think we would wear white instead? Because we're celebrating the second baptism of that person who has died. They are with Christ. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an occasion for joy, okay, and celebration. They're celebrating their second baptism, their new life in Christ. Just like we celebrate our baptism when we're babies, as our new life in Christ, we celebrate our death in new life in Christ. And we would wear white. Okay? So, now that I've picked out 
my uh, uh, my my gear, all right, my swag, okay, wearing green, I'm going to get changed. The first thing I need to do is I need to wear this alb. That's the first thing I need to put on, okay? The alb is white. So what do you think white is? We just talked about white. White, this white alb is a reminder of my baptism, okay, and the cleanliness, okay, and the pure, the purification. So every time I wear this, I need to be thinking about that. And you know what's really cool? I'm going to move this for a second. There are prayers that I pray as I'm vesting, okay. So as I'm putting this alb on, I'm praying this little prayer for the alb. Make me clean, O Lord, and cleanse my heart that being made white in the blood of the Lamb, I may deserve an eternal reward. So as I'm putting my alb on, I'm praying that little prayer, okay? Once I have my alb on, the next thing I need to do is, this is too loose on me, okay? I could probably trip and fall. So I need a piece of rope to kind of tie it around my waist. Well, that piece of rope is called a cincture, okay? This is a cincture, and I tie it into a specific knot. And the cincture is supposed, to, is supposed to be a symbol of purity, okay? Of purity and of chastity, right? The purity and chastity that I have, not just me as a deacon, but we all have, to Christ Jesus, okay? So I'll put this cincture on, and I tie it. And then I move it to the side, okay? And as I'm doing this, I'm praying, Gird me, O Lord, with the cincture of purity, and quench in my heart the fire of concupiscence, that the virtue of continence and chastity may abide in me. Okay. Now the next thing that I do is I'm going to put a stole on, right? I just want to remind you that a priest and a deacon, we almost have similar clothes or similar vestments that we have to wear. The cincture and the alb are two very similar things that we have to wear. We also wear a stole, but my stole is closed. Father's stole is a stole that's open and, and kind of, um, uh, it, it's open and it just kind of uh, uh, drags against him. Or for me, it goes to my side, all right, because it's closed right here, it's going to hang on my side. I have a favorite one that I use, so I'm going to use that one. That one, that's right here. I received this as a gift, an ordination gift. So I'll kiss it, okay, out of reverence, and I'll pray the prayer of the stole. Return to me, O Lord, the stole of immortality, which I have lost in the sin of my first parent. And although I unworthily approach thy sacred mystery, grant to me nevertheless everlasting joy. Okay. So the stole is a reminder of our immortality at the end with our Lord Jesus Christ and with God in heaven, okay? The last thing that I clothe myself with, that I vest myself with, this is called a dalmatic, okay? Now, the priest and the deacon wear something similar, wear something like this, and my, as a deacon, my vestment is called a dalmatic. Father's vestment is called a chasuble, okay? What's the difference? I'll show you the difference. And as I'm putting this on, I'm going to pray the prayer. I'm going to kiss it. Lord, endow me with this garment of salvation, the vestment of joy, and with the dalmatic of justice ever encompass me. So I put my dalmatic on, and I'm going to show you the difference, the major difference between the dalmatic and the chasuble. The dalmatic has sleeves, has sleeves. The chasuble does not. It, the chasuble looks more like a poncho, okay? The priest will put it over himself. But for a deacon, I use the dalmatic. And the dalmatic has sleeves because it is a reminder for the deacon that he serves not only God, but he serves the others, the congregation, the body of Christ, okay? And I think it's very fitting that the Delmatic has sleeves because 
I have to roll up my sleeves and I have to get dirty. I have to serve. Okay? So that is the difference between the domatic and a chasuble. All right? All right, it's almost time for mass. Let's get going. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. For the deacon, one of the most important things, the book of the Gospels. All right, I have to take the book of the Gospels with me because I have to proclaim the word of God to the people. Okay? Did you know that the, um, uh, when a deacon is ordained, he, the bishop, will take a book of the Gospels and he will lay it out like this and I have to take my two hands and hold it like this and the bishop will pray over me and say, receive the Gospel of Christ whose herald you become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. And that's why I love processing this book of the Gospels down the down the aisle before, right during Mass, at the beginning of Mass. That's why I love holding it up so high, and that's why I love putting it on the ambo and proclaiming the Word of God to everybody, because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to preach the Word of God to not only you, but to me. All right, it's time to get going. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was very informative. I will see you at Sunday Mass.